Good morning again. Thank you, thank you. We're uh, in a three-week series called Overcoming Fear, Weariness, and Anxiety. Last week, we, we talked about overcoming fear. You know, fear has to do with the matter of adequacy, and we talked last week that the adequate, the great warrior, the overcomer lives inside of you. In Colossians 1, Paul says, this is a mystery that's been hidden from ages past, now has been revealed to the saints, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And we talked about that the person that's inside of you is, is up to the match to any circumstance, any giant, any a thing that is causing you to feel inadequate. Christ in you is the hope of glory. We talked about also that, you know, it's the perfect love of the Father that drives fear out of our life. And when there's fear arising, God's just saying, hey, you're, the love of the Father hasn't been perfected, hasn't been matured to the level that he wants it to. So we, we're going to talk a little of this uh, week, though, about overcoming weariness. Now, weariness has to do with the matter of capacity, of strength, of power. And thank goodness, we overwhelm weariness with God's power. So when you're overcome with weariness, we overwhelm it with God's strength. We're going to be looking at Isaiah 40. A lot of you know that about talking about mounting up with wings as eagles. Um, I, I have an eagle on my shirt. That's probably why I love American Eagle. There's a mounted up eagle on my deal. You know, I, uh, for the last eight years, I was a full bird colonel. And I was going to wear that uniform because right on the middle, right over my heart, is an eagle that is mounted up. Now, I was going to wear it this morning, but I'm retired, and there is a, a shrinking gremlin in my closet. <laughs> and every pair of pants, as great as I would love to wear that this morning, I, you know, I, I don't know what happened. Um uh, I guess it's the joys of retirement. Now, you'll see this. This is a, I, I named my eagle this morning. He sits on my desk. I named, named him Big Dad, all right? We're going to get to that, and you'll understand why I named him Big Dad. But, you know, something about eagles, I'm learned. I, I have, I'm a hospice chaplain now. I have a patient who's a son-in-law as, as collects eagles and studies eagles. And uh, he, he gave me this clue. He said, he said, Jeff, eagles are not that strong. But they have the ability to mount up and catch the wind in their wings. That's good, huh? All you have to do is just mount up. Spread the wings. Catch the wind. So we're going to get to that place in Isaiah 40, where we talk about mounting up. But it says, those that wait on the Lord will mount up with wings like eagles. We're going to talk about what it means to wait on the Lord. The word wait here, I'll give you a little commercial as we, we're getting to it. It is, it is not sitting around in passivity. Waiting is assertively trusting. It is assertively pressing in to a spot where things are clearing. And we're going we're gonna to look at waiting as a matter of doing with seeing, knowing, and hearing this morning. Last week, uh, one of my f favorite far sides was, uh, it talked about, hey, it's, it, uh, I don't know if you remember the mosquito that's beginning to swell up. And it says, Betty, Betty, don't pull out or pull out. You've, hit a, you've hurt an artery. And I said, Antioch, don't pull out. Stay in the artery. We will hear, here's a picture of weariness. If you'll bring up this next uh, far side. It's a boneless chicken ranch. 
Any of you relate to that this morning? That That's really kind of where I am this morning. I, I'm really in a weary place. I feel like a boneless chicken just laid out all over the place. Well, I'm having to mount up. I'm having re- literally to renew my strength this morning. Any of you need some new strength? Any of you need your power increased? Any of you weary? Well, this morning, there's a way to exchange that weariness for the power of God. Anybody in on that? I am. So, first thing we're going to look at this morning, you'll see in this Isaiah 40, uh, verses 25 and 26, the first point is that God is a, he, he, the Holy One is a great question asker. He, he asks great questions from the Holy One. The Trinity, you'll find, the Father, Son, and the Spirit ask a lot of great questions. But you know, they don't just ask you the question and leave you where, where the answer is, but they point you and they have a direction. And what is that direction? It's true north. It's true north to themselves. So notice the first question has to do with comparison by who we see. Verses 25 and 26 says this. To whom will you compare me that I would be his equal, says the Holy One. So he asked that question of comparison. Who, can, who would you compare me to that would be my equal? And then he says, hey, look north. Look north. Notice it says, raise up your eyes on high to see who has created, the who created these stars, the one who brings out their multitude by number. He calls them all by name because of the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. Not one of them is missing. One of the things I used to love to do when I was uh, deployed, we had a Ford operating base. Uh, folks, it is out in the middle of nowhere. And what I loved about that, if you've ever gotten in a place in the world where there's hardly any light, when you look up at the sky, the stars are just, I felt like I could reach up and pick one out by my hand. And I chose, when we were way out in the desert, to put my little cot behind the med aid aid station because there was about 30 snoring soldiers in this tent. And it's like the walls went out. And I mean, so I just decided to take my cot outside. But you know, that's how I went to sleep every night. And there were shooting stars everywhere, and I thought, and the Lord says, oh, there goes whatever his name was. Oh, there goes another star by name. And the Lord's saying, hey, when you're weary, when you're weary, look up. There is what we, he calls general revelation. The Lord says, hey, all the things that I've created, look up. Now, I want you to look on a horizontal level. Look at the person on your left and your right this morning. As great as they are and as wonderful companions they are, if you keep your eyes on a horizontal level, you're going to get weary real quick. Because you're going to, we're falling. We're, we're going to disappoint one another. That's why... The Lord said, hey, look up, look up. Notice what Romans 1, 20 and 21 says. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, that is his eternal power and his divine nature, have been clearly perceived, being understood by what he has made so that you're without excuse. And even though they knew God, they did not honor God or give thanks. The Lord's saying, Look north, look up, look to the things I've created. Notice what Colossians 3, 1 through 3 says, Therefore, 
you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on the things on the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, you will be revealed with him in glory. Why does God say look up, mount up? It's to go up where you're seated. Do you know this morning you've been raised up and you're seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ? The reason you mount up and you look up is you come up to where you truly are in your spirit. You know, and eagles, when they mount up, they get up where they can clearly see. They can clearly hear. The view is from, from a vantage point. So the Father is saying, hey, look up. Look at the stars. Look at the creation. He goes from there, from general revelation. I'm going to give you a, a little uh, theology on revelation. There's general revelation. There's specific revelation. And there is progressive revelation. Now, the, the Lord takes this next question and he says, all right, you can look at the stars, you can see my eternal power and the things I've made, but now I'm going to get you to look at true north, really where you're supposed to be looking at, and he talks about specific um, revelation. Notice the second question has to do with putting, not putting God on trial by what you say. Notice the next two verses. You know, when you're offended by God and you're thinking he's lost sight of you and you're, and you're hitting from him or justice that is due you has been lost, it, you, it can suck your strength out of you. Notice the next question that it, the Lord asks is, why do you say, Jacob, and you assert, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and the justice due me escapes the notice of of my God. Now Judah and Israel now are being attacked by the Assyrians in this context. And the trial, the heat, the disappointment has is is turned up. And Judah and Israel is saying, Where is the jealous God? Where is he? You ever been there before where something happens in your life and you're in the waiting room? specifically when there's great loss in your life. Have you ever been there and you'd say, where is God? Surely, when this is going on in my life, God is on a coffee break. He was behind the door somewhere. And the justice that's due me has escaped God's notice. You ever been there? I have. I have. Beloved, please hear me. When you're in that spot, you do not want the justice that is due you. Are you catching me? What you want due to you is mercy. I am not lessening the disappointment of God, the loss of God. Edie and I have had a lot of loss in our life. But we, you can, I, we have gotten to that place. God, where are you? What are you doing? Where are you? It's, it's, some people call it the dark night of the soul. And I want to just say as far as fellowship, companionship, you notice what it's, it's saying, why it's the words that are coming out of your mouth. I just want to say we need people in our life close enough to us that are, that are, that are word watchers. Are you, are you catching this this morning? When you find coming out of your mouth justice is due with me and it's speaking disappointment with God you need some people you've invited into your life to say watch it, you, you, I'm not asking you to check every word but if you see a pattern in my life where I'm there's disappointment and I'm pulling away from God would would you speak into my life 
And a lot of times I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll, in active listening, I'll, I'll say to a person, can I repeat to you what, what you're saying right now? And a lot of times that revelation of their, their they've pulled away from God. And I, I need that kind of, of uh, accountability in my life. Now, God moves, again, from, from looking, words. Now he's talking about something you need to know and hear. Notice the third question. It has to do with knowing and hearing, and it has to do with great exchanges. Verse 28 says, do you not know, have you not heard? And the intent here is, yes, you have heard and you do know, but there's because of the place you're in right now, you need to hear and know to a deeper level. That's called progressive revelation. Did you know that you have not arrived? See, there's some older people down here that, that every time I say a statement like that, aha, yeah, yeah, we, 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 we kind of... We kind of get it. And you're going to see at the end of this passage uh, how age will will help you in in some of those things. So the Lord is saying, hey, do you not know and have you not heard? There's five things he's looking at that he wants you to know and he wants you to hear. There's five things. Notice what it says here. The the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired. His understanding is unsearchable. Did you know that your father, Big Dad, your pop will not learn anything today. Do you know that your father will not increase in strength today? Did you know that the Lord, there's nothing that's going on in your life, has, now, or will, will ever take him by surprise? I thought this was a message on weariness, but you know what I think this is a message on? It's on Big Dad. It's get, this message is about getting Dad, Big Pop, back in our view. It's about the attributes of God. It is about knowing the glories, the eternal Father, the, the person that created the ends of the earth. He doesn't grow weary or become weak. Aren't you glad you have a father like that? And he says, I want you to learn to wait. I want you to learn to wait on me. I want you to, especially in those moments when you're weary and there's no strength left in you, which that's where I have been for a while. So I want you to learn to wait on me. So notice the deeper knowing, and now we're going we're gonna to look at some great exchanges. Look at verse 29. Through 31, it says, He gives strength to the weary, and to the one who lacks might, he increased power. Though youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Did you notice the three exchanges here? I want you to envision this morning a big counter. You're walking up to a big counter, and who's standing behind the counters? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you can you can come up to that counter, and you know what you can bring? Hey, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, I'm bringing my weariness. I'm putting it on the counter, and I'm shoving it forward and up to you. You know what the Father does? Hey, he's turning in his weariness. 
says to Jesus, give him strength. You can come up and say, I lack power, and you can shove it on that counter. And the Father will say, Holy Spirit, increase power. Give him power. Give him power. And then you can say, I want to mount up. And if you mount up, you're going to be able to run. You're going to be able to walk. You're going to be able to soar. And I hope you'll, you'll make those exchanges this morning. That is what, when gaining you strength, it really, the word means exchange. To exchange it. So, what, let's talk about practicals of waiting. Practicals of waiting. This guy, the reason I'm naming him Big Dad, is really when you're weary and you're to the end of yourself, this is a picture of mounting up. It is, it is coming up. And when you mount up and by faith say, Father, I, I have, I'm at the end of my strength, I'm in my own power, and I'm by faith going to mount up my wings. As you, as you mount up, you soar up, you catch wind. I, was, I said to Edie, my wife, the other day, I said, man, I, I'm at a place, I need to pull the oars in the boat. She said, that's okay, sweetheart, but put up your sail. I said, girl, I am so glad I married you. Did you catch that? When you're saying, man, I, I'm ready to just pull the oars in the boat. Mount up. Put you, don't forget to put your sail up. Because a sail can catch the wind. Here are some practicals of waiting. I'm going to recommend to you three books this morning. I'm going to put them right here on the front if you want to take a screenshot. I think one of the things I'm going to do this summer is I need a, a vision of a big dad. I'm going to look at the attributes of God again. His majesty, his power, his glory, even his wrath. Do you know that your father, his character is in perfect tension at all times? It's an okay, this, this, this quality happens, this attribute happens. No, it, in, it, towards you, Every attribute of who he is is in perfect tension towards you at all times. If you've never read The Knowledge of the Holy by A.W. Tozer, it will blow your mind. The Attributes of God. Knowing God. It's a classic by J.I. Packer. The Attributes of God. And then by Dan DeHaan, The God You Can Know. Waiting on the Lord is getting your your father in in a bigger view and looking up, setting your eyes on majesty, on splendor, on glory, and getting your father as big as he really is. That is one thing you can do to wait on the Lord. So I'm going to put these right here if you want to take a screenshot of them later and you say, wow, I'm going to join you. I want to get... Get Big Dad in view. May I say, if that something right there doesn't settle with you and say, no way am I going to draw near, may I suggest you may have a father wound? And the idea of drawing near and even getting in, getting the face of the father, you say, no way. You, you can get that healed in connection prayer. By getting that father wound out so you can say, wow, I want to I wanna crawl up in dad's lap and see how big. And feel those, as we talked about last week, that righteous right hand underneath me. That embrace of all that he is. Another is just making space early in the morning to hear your father's voice. 
this is not giving you a formula. You may have what's great for you. I'm just going to give you some suggestions. Did you know that his mercies are new every morning? Isn't that wonderful? Every morning you get to hit the reset button. His compassions never fail. His mercies are new every morning. And I saw this cartoon one time, that this, this uh, gentleman just kind of coming up, grabbing his coffee, running right out of the house, and Father God was sitting in his easy chair. Thinking morning after morning after morning, he just blazes right by me, and no wonder he's so weary. No wonder he's so tired. No wonder he doesn't have what it takes to do the things that I've called him to do. So here's some things that I, I do, uh, if, and I'd suggest you write some of these down. If you think, wow, I, I need some direction how to, to, to get quiet and wait on the Lord, there's a little sermon pad right in front of you, and there's pins. Here's, if you've never looked up small straws in a soft wind, that's just a prophetic voice that I look at. Uh, it's a couple that lives up in Colorado, and they just tried and true, and they, they're hearing the Father. So I, I kind of get a, a prophetic voice, and that, 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 that ministers to me. I just don't jump right into the Word. I, here, here's what I, I, I try to get quiet and say, Father, you are Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Is there a part of your character you would like me to focus on this morning? What is it you, you want me to see about your face? And the Lord's faithful. He'll, he'll say, hey, here's something I want you to focus on this morning. Then I go to I am. It's like, okay, Lord, who am I? I, I rehearse. I renew my mind with who I am. There's, there's five new names over about a 30-year journey that the Lord's given me new, a new name. And I remind myself those new names he's given me. Just like he changed Jacob to Israel, he changed Abraham to Abram. Have you ever had God change your name? So I just remember, this is who you say I am, Father. And then I look at, is there, is there something you're calling me to today? What is, what is ahead of me and what do I need in, in order to fulfill that calling. Now, I'm, I, I, this, is, this is an interesting deal. If, you're, if you are at a place of weariness and you need increased power, this is a church that believes all the gifts that exist and they're operative today. I would encourage you to look at 1 Corinthians 14 and if God has given you the spiritual gift of tongues that talks about the inner man being strengthened, there's, there's several different kinds of tongues talked about there. There's tongues of men, there's tongues of angels, and there's interpretation. But God has in his, his mysterious deal, it looks foolish to man, but it, it, is, it is, I do a lot of operating in that gift when I'm weary. And there's something that happens in the inside of me. If you just, God, I don't even know how to pray. That's, that's a gift that if, if God's given it to you, operate it, op use it. If you don't have that spiritual gift, ask for it. The Lord says, I, I want you to eagerly desire the gifts. Paul said, I, I wish that all of you spoke in tongues, but more I would love, wish that you would prophesy. That you would, you would speak words of admonition, encouragement into other people's lives. Here's what happens to me. Sometimes when I get so weary, so tired, and even trying to have a quiet time wears me out. I, something I practice, and it takes about 20 or 30 minutes. When I'm, when I'm in that place and I try to sit down and I think, oh my gosh, I, even more information right now, is, it just overwhelms me. You know what I do? I get my favorite person of worship. 
I get all that on, and I go for about a 30-minute walk, and I just put on worship. And it takes about 20 minutes sometimes for the sky to open, for the, the weariness and everything that's crowded to break through to where I can see Big Dad, to where I can look up. So that is when you're in that place of weariness that you can do. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up this morning. I'm going to ask you to stand up. Any of you weary this morning? I ask you during worship this morning, Father, bring that weariness to the counter. Push it right in front of the Father. And would you receive God's strength? Would you say, Lord, I lack power. I lack might. Just during this time, say, Father, I bring that. And the, the great exchanges are that he will increase power. I'm going to get the prayer team to come up this morning. Just any need that you may have this morning, saying, hey, I, I just, I need a touch from the Father. I need, if, if you are that gift that I've talked about this morning, hey, I just, I want to have someone, I want to earnestly seek the gifts. I want everything God has to, to get me in a place of where I experience the, all the strength God and I encourage you this morning to worship the Lord as you there's nothing like worship looking up it's you know Psalm 121 says go look up to the hills my help comes from the Lord God's saying always look true north set your mind on things above so let's worship the Lord this morning you can get the strength and the power you need right where you sit and worship, but if you need just a special touch this morning, these folks, hear the Lord, they'll minister to you. Let's worship the Lord in spirit and in truth.